What's up, y'all? That is a tune called The Mug of Brown Ale, and it was requested uh, in a video that I did a couple of videos ago, so thank you for the request. I appreciate it. I, I like getting ideas of stuff that people want to learn, so uh, this is a good tune that I kind of forgot about, so I appreciate it for that reason as well. It brought it back to mind. Let's start breaking down basic melody, A part, as we always do. It's got some kind of interesting arpeggios, I guess, but jumps between the octaves. So it's one of those things you want to make sure you get nice and confidently and, and you're hitting those notes nice and strongly. But here we go, basic melody, nice and slow. And go around to the second half. I'll do that first section again before we carry on to that. Second section is a repeat of the first, that, that sort of bouncy part between the octaves. So, as is fairly common, it's just the second half of that first part that's different. But I'll, I'll run that whole second section again. that. We'll carry on with the B part now. As is pretty common with A minor tunes, it's going to spend a lot of time in that second octave. Uh, in this case, we're starting on the high E, going up to the high A. If you have any of those notes that break, if they're just, if they're not clean, don't worry about it. Just go back and work on those specific passages and make sure you get good, clean, clean tone, good, clean notes on those. So here we go. The other thing to keep in mind when you're running a tune like this is if it's easier to play it down the, the octave, you know, if, you're, if you've got people that are going to be driven crazy by this shrilliness of the higher notes, feel free to drop it down. You can do something like that if you're so inclined. I'm going to play that second half again um, in the upper octave just because that's where it's meant to be, but feel free to drop it if you're so inclined. So here's the last half of the B part. second half of that ought to sound familiar, familiar because that's how the A part finishes. I'm going to play the whole B part all the way together, nice and connected, so hopefully you'll get that. So here we go. Last thing I'll mention about this before we dive into the ornaments, and you may have heard this when I played it up tempo the second time through, the B part, the last time that I play the B part, and the last time that we play this tune around here, we do this. Jumping up to that really high B. I don't know if that's a regional thing, because as I was looking around, I didn't see any other settings of this tune that did that. Maybe that's just something that we do, but that's how I like doing it. Feel free to throw that in if you're so inclined. Now let's talk ornaments. With this tune, that, that kind of the hook of this tune is that jumpy octave jumping thing. So that's how I'll play it. I'll chuck in a, a, a roll at the very end of it, but otherwise I'm kind of trying to let those notes be what they are. And I'll tap those the, the notes in between, but I really want to let that jump be the, the interesting part of that. So you might do a, a bit of a, a crossing noise to begin, where I'm hitting that D first. And you could do those on each of those notes. Again, just trying to let that part sing. Roll there. Sliding up to the highest note, mostly because that's one of those things that I've mentioned a few times. The higher octave notes are the more likely ones to break. 
So the more ornaments you throw in there, the bigger risk you run. A slide is a pretty low risk uh, ornament you can do in the upper octave. <laughs> Nothing else there besides tonguing. And I'm really trying to impart that, that lilty sort of a jig groove to it. <laughs> where I'm just using my tongue and then the last note there to do a crossing noise to hit that, that bottom note, but mostly just using my tongue to give it that kind of groove, that, that jig groove. Roll on the G there to land on that phrase. Again, just tonguing there to give it that groove, and back around hitting that, that first uh, crossing noise on the repeat of that, of that phrase. So then to finish, the only other thing I would do, let's say, Okay, a couple of ways to finish that phrase, and it's probably worth sitting on this one for a minute because it repeats in the B part as well. So, you've got a lot of options. You could do a pran there. You could do a roll there. Then to finish the phrase, sliding out, you could do a, a tap on the A. A lot of things you could do. Subtle, subtle differences between them, but because you're using this phrase a few times, you can start mixing it up and just seeing what works, and if it works one time, maybe you do something different the next time, and just try it and get a bit of a repertoire there with different ways to, to have fun with that phrase. B part going all the way up in the upper octave, nothing there except the roll on the, the high A. That's one, I mentioned this earlier, Trust in your whistle and, and make sure you know what it can do. Uh, if a high A roll works, cool, try it. If not, maybe a slide or a cut or something like that. <laughs> Nothing there except just very simple cuts and tonguing to give it that, that jig groove. I'll usually do a triplet on that. You could do a crayon. Um, I'll do one or the other pretty much every time. Again, uh, same as I did demonstrated before in that high G, just a roll. And then a tap, because it's really four Gs in a, in a row in that case. I use that trick a lot if there are four in a row. It's nice and subtle, I think an extra tap, you could do an extra cut. But that's in the upper octave, cuts are a bit more intense, I think, than taps. So that's why I like doing that. Same phrase there, really nothing more than tonguing. I will do that that um, push, I guess you call it. Uh, sliding into it a little bit early. That's one of those things that if it fits your style, cool. If not, it may not sound great. So feel free to mess around with that. But the main things there on that last phrase, like I mentioned in the A part, doing either a crayon or, or a, a triplet. That's how I do it. Let me know what y'all think about this tune. Uh, it's a good one, I appreciate the suggestion, and it was nice to kind of get back and, and bust this tune out, because I really haven't heard it in a while, but that was fun. Guys, I will see y'all in the next one. Take care, y'all. Cheers.